What's up everybody? Welcome back to Real Comic Book Talk today. We had the first ever Fairfax car here with the amazing writer, Mr. Uh, Barbara Van, uh, Vendetti. Right? Yeah, I said it right. Sorry, y'all know I'm bad with names. But yes, Mr. Barbara Vendetti, he wrote, he writes the, as of right now, his current runs are the Damage comic, the DC Comics also writes Green Lantern and, uh, I mean, Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps. Just two amazing storylines right now. But I'll let you talk a little more about that. First of all, I want to say thank you for being here. Yes, man. I appreciate it. Um, number one, let's talk about damage. Because I know it's not a lot of times, especially in DC and Marvel, you don't get to create a new character. Yeah. So how did that go? How did that process start to happen? It was a concept that I talked to them about uh, gosh, I don't know, a few years back where I sort of had an idea of something we could do different with the Iron Man program, uh, the extension of the Iron Man mythology. So they wanted to do the New Age of Heroes, they came back to us, uh, came back to me and they asked me if I'd be willing to do a pitch for a new character. And uh, so yeah, I jumped at the chance, like you say, it's not something you get to do very often at Marvel or DC. You know, if you think of sort of the DC universe as like a big wall, uh -huh. and there's all these bricks in the wall, and like Kirby's in that wall, and you know, so many great creators, Kubert's in that wall, and you know, you go on and on and on. You know, we got to add a brick to that wall, so that's pretty cool. Great. So, I don't believe this is the case, but there are a lot of people saying that with the Age of Heroes, you're really doing something that Marvel and DC have both done is take characters from each other and revamp them in different ways. Like they say, the, um, to reference to like the Fantastic Four, sure. and Sideways is like the um, Spider-Man. They say a lot of people say Damage are like the Incredible Hulk. Sure. How would you counteract that argument? I mean, I don't know if I even need to. It's, it's, a, it's a it's an archetype, right. you know, but it's a very different story. The character is very different in terms of, you know, who Bruce Banner is versus who the main character of Damage is, Ethan Avery. Motivations are different. Power sets are different. So, yeah, it's a big, you know, yeah. large monster figure, but uh, a lot about the story is different. So, uh, to say there's no similarities obviously isn't the case in the sense that there are a lot of hulking monster figures, right. but, uh, you know, this is our take on it. Preach to the choir. I, I just wanted you to get a chance to say that out of the record. Now, with the Age of Heroes, like, when, these, when you, uh, they came to your pitch, DC came to you and said, would you like to pitch a new concept? Did they uh, have you sit down with other writers as, with Sideways and Terrific to ask how you guys would create these different characters in general, or did you just, they let you just get, take the reins and run with it? Well, because it was an idea that I'd already brought to them several years earlier, they asked me if I could sort of make a different pitch uh, for the character that would be part of this new initiative. But then, that was as far as it got. And then Tony Daniel came in, and when it came to the actual stories that were in the comics, as far as, you know, Wonder Woman or, uh, you know, Suicide Squad or things like that, that was talking with Tony and figuring out, you know, what really he wanted to draw, because it's, it's more of an artist-driven series in terms of the storytelling. So. I would write, you know, rough plots, and he would take those plots and then bring his own creativity to it, and the story would come out of something again. So, uh, a little bit of a different process for something like How to Win the Green Lantern Corps. That's kind of what made it fun. Uh, I've really enjoyed working on it. Uh, it's nice that the different arcs with the different artists, I get to ask them, you know, what is it you want to draw, and, and what excites you, and we're, we're far enough in advance that we can sort of try to tailor the arcs for the individual artists. Kerry Nord always wanted to draw Poison Ivy and Gorilla Grodd, so that's why Poison Ivy and Gorilla Grodd are in this <laughs> for you know? It's kind of fun to uh, create a comic in that way. Right? So I want to go back to the Green, oh, sorry. I want to go back to the Green Lantern, um, to how I in the Green Lantern, of course, uh, series you're working on at the moment. With everything that's going on with inside the DC Universe, throughout the comics with the Justice League and DC Metal and stuff like that, is it hard to, Put your, uh, grab your story to what's happening there? Um, I'll draw the Green Lantern Corps a bit different because at the time that I was writing it, I just finished it with issue 50 about three weeks ago. It was really the only book that was set in space. Right. All the other DC universes on Earth, right. we were out in space. It's kind of what I liked about the book when they asked me about writing it. Is that I knew it would be an opportunity for us to kind of stay in space and have that whole wide cosmic tapestry to play with. So it wasn't really something that we had to work around a lot of what was going on in the mainstream DCU the way I might have had to if it was more of an Earthbound hero. Now we did connect to metal, so that was fun, trying to take the architecture of the building in metal and doing an issue of Justice League that I wrote, an issue of Hal Jordan, the Green Lantern Corps, that became a separate story. 
Uh, but that was really the only instance out of all 51 issues of the Hal Jordan Degree Landing Corps that we connected to other events like that. That's very so weird. Um, since the Green Liners are in space, like you said, you got a whole wide world of work in space, almost unlimited. Do you ever see yourself using other characters in space, like taking on different factors of like, apocalypse or the new gods there or anything like that? Yeah, sure. We did that. Uh, let's see. We had Brainiac uh, was in the second story. We had uh, the new gods in uh, a storyline. It was just, just 26 to 29. We brought in Superman for a little bit. We had Rip Hunter in a story. Uh, we had General Zod in a story where they fought General Zod. So I really tried to bring a lot of other elements of the DCU, particularly cosmic elements, and uh, bring them into the series in a way that would, even though we were out in space, reflect that we're part of the shared DC universe. Because I do remember, I didn't get a chance to read it because I have two kids and I'm trying to yeah. work with but it's... We've all been there. Yeah. The, um, I do know there has been a new Lantern Corps created. Now, do you see yourself diving into that anytime soon? We did with the Sinestro Corps for a little bit. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm done with the series. I'm not writing it anymore. So I'm not sure what's going to happen afterwards. But we did do a story with the Sinestro Corps. That's how we actually opened our series. We did kind of a long-form story with them up to about issue 25. Uh, I'm not sure what plans are for it. Now, like I said, I'm not writing it anymore. I don't know what the plans will be in the future. So. So what are you uh, currently working on? Outside of Damage, what else do you have? I do so, Damage, I do Hawkman, and I have a series that I'm writing for DC that hasn't been announced yet. Should be announced pretty soon. I'm doing a World War II graphic novel uh, for Vertigo that will be out in June of next year. I'm sorry, May of next year. Okay, so uh, the Hawkman series that you have, uh, have you started on it? It's three issues out, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Again, <laughs> so um, I do know that Hawkman has a complicated, confusing history, <laughs> like origin. Yeah. How are you going about, are you going to try to find a way to go out and fix that, or try to smooth uh, it out? We more? actually tackled that head on in the first issue, uh, and then we just barrel forward from there. So we do have a solution for that. I don't know if you want to call it a solution, but we do have a way that we kind of bring it all together with a new piece of mythology. It's very simple, very easy to understand. Kind of gets rid of a lot of that confusion, then we just move forward with our story from there. Thank you. I guess I gotta get it. Hawkman has always been confused. One guy he's from space. Check it out. Another guy, another time he reincarnated. This is yeah. a wild thing. You should check it out. Now, was there any other DC characters or Marvel characters? Any other characters you actually love to write in a series? Oh, uh, yeah, tons of them. Uh, Suicide Squad, Superman, uh, Nightwing, Captain America. Uh, I mean, it just goes on and on. There's so many great characters there um, that you'd love to get a crack at if you ever get the chance. Uh, I feel very fortunate to be able to do the stuff that I've been able to do until now. Uh, who knows what the future holds? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for all your time, man. Thank I'm you, not going to hold you up. Yep, you got a long day. Thank and uh, till next time, guys, deuces.